Boy, that's good coffee. One section I wanted to get to was uh, just reading um, some of the stories that I run, my and my, me and my staff run into every day are the requests we get from people that have criminal records. Now remember, the Commonwealth has been giving out criminal convictions for decades, literally decades. And across all the 67 counties and all the different police departments, they have been giving out hundreds of thousands or millions of convictions every year. And so these convictions tend to be debilitating. They raise obstacles to getting a job, completing a job interview, getting housing, uh, going to getting educated, uh, or even qualifying for a mortgage or a loan. These things just go on to be researched, used against you, especially as we came through COVID, Corona, and the economic slowdown. Employers really are not taking a second look at somebody when they have other candidates that are just waiting to jump in and take the position. So anyway, another caveat that I want to make clear is that I'm a lawyer and my clients are protected by confidentiality and even people that send me an email or fill out the form on recorderaser.net and I talk to them by phone or I shoot them an email or I research their record and send it to them for review. Um, nobody's individual identifying information would ever be used in any of these content creation or blog posts or anything like that. The candidate, the applicant is entitled to legal advice that is privileged and isn't going to go anywhere. So if I read a generic story about a situation, it's because I exclude any kind of personally identifying information and I've identified it as being very similar and generic to literally thousands or tens of thousands of other situations that I run into. And so having said that, uh, here was an email from somebody I pled guilty to making false statements. The online record said it was fraud to obtain food stamps. This is in 2011. I can no longer work as an LPN. I want to go to nursing school, but I can't start my clinicals until the record's cleared. So that's incredible. That's the kind of thing I get. I would review that in an instant. I would actually research the record and send it to this person. My personal takeaway is nonviolent offense, financial offense probably happened during a time of financial necessity when you're trying to feed yourself and your family and pay rent, meaning also nonviolent. Eleven years ago today, 2011, um, if the review process is two years, it's going to be 13-year-old nonviolent economic offense. I think you're a good candidate to file for a pardon. And while you can't speed the process up, it's still going to take a year or two to review. I think that case is going to get the votes it needs to move forward.